Hi, ladies. Okay, so yesterday we went over a lot of different things. We went over what determines the different types of precipitation that will fall, and we discovered that it was temperature, the temperature closer to the Earth's surface. So as these ice crystals fall, if the temperature is cold, they're going to stay crystals and we're going to get snow. If the temperature closer to the surface is warm, they're going to melt and we're going to get rain. We also discussed the fronts and what type of weather the fronts bring. We talked about high and low pressure systems. So high pressure systems rotate clockwise to the right, low pressure systems counterclockwise to the left, and air pressure is measured by a barometer. High pressure systems bring nice weather, low pressure systems usually bring storms. And lastly, yesterday we discussed isobars. Isobars connect different points, or sorry, similar points, or same points of barometric pressure. And we know that wind always moves from high to low pressure areas. So today, we're going to be watching a few videos and then moving on to severe weather. So predicting weather is something that we need to know how to do. How do we predict weather? Well, we look at the fronts. We look at the weather that's behind the front. What type of weather is this front bringing to my city? We look at the pressure systems. Do we have a high pressure system over us? Do we have a low pressure system over us? And here is a meteorologist who's going to explain a little bit of that. I'm meteorologist Ryan Davidson. I'm actually Elizabeth's mom's cousin, and I work here at the Weather Channel, and uh, I hear you guys are learning about weather. So we're going to talk a couple of things about weather systems and fronts and kind of how those all come together to make weather, and then we'll talk a little bit about your forecast. So first off, we're going to talk about understanding what goes on in a weather map. So first, we've got cold air, and as it pushes further to the south, along the leading edge of where that cold air is advancing is where we would set up a cold front. That's going to be this blue line here with all these triangles, and they point in the direction the cold front is moving. Now on the other side, we have a warm front. When you have a mass of warm air moving northward, or in any direction, the leading edge of that warm air mass is where we draw this warm front, which is going to be the little red line with the half circles best way to remember it is they're like little half suns, so they're always denoting warmer air. You kind of work it out that way, where sun, warmth, warm front, right like that. So that's how we denote where a warm front lays. Now when we start moving and adding in things like pressure systems, we have a low pressure system right here. Air around a low pressure system moves counterclockwise and inward. So when we start putting those air masses around that area of low pressure, we begin to see just a few things happening here. The warm air surging northward, that's where the warm front is. The cold front surging southward, that's where we line up that cold front. And then we zoom in closer where we get all the precipitation. What's going to happen here is you've got this air coming down from the north and this air kind of going towards the north and east. What happens is this piles up as it gets close to this warm air mass and it starts to lift. So where these meet, all that wind meets, we call that convergence, the meeting of air. When it happens, it starts to go. It has nowhere to go, so it has to go up. Once that starts going up, that's where we start to get clouds and rain. And usually along the cold frontal side of a storm is where we'll see things like thunderstorms. But on the warm frontal side, over to the north, that's where we'll start to see just broad areas of rain and showers and cloudiness. And as that comes through, well, the weather gets a little bit cooler. Now, high pressure, a little bit different. High pressure systems, air goes clockwise and outwards from an area of high pressure. So why don't we ever see any rain or anything near an area of high pressure? When you have all of this air moving outwards, it's actually like if you were going to turn the hose right on the ground. What happens is that water goes down and it spreads out. You don't have any lift, so you don't have anything to create that upflow of moisture to create any precipitation. So usually when we talk about high pressure, we talk about nice weather. But let's take a look at what your forecast is looking like as we go through the next couple of days. We're going to be looking 
add a little bit of rain. We've got a couple of fronts to the south. Here's our warm front. See the red with the half circles? That's going to come northward. And we're going to see a little bit of rain in eastern and central North Carolina as these low pressure systems and their cold fronts and warm fronts move along the eastern seaboard. Then by Wednesday, we'll see maybe a little bit of rain in Raleigh, but it quickly moves out and we start to see some high pressure move in. How do we know? Well, we don't see any weather going on here by Thursday. And that'll stay the same even as we head into Friday. Things kind of clear out, but the next weather system comes on in. We start to see some rain heading in portions of western Tennessee and portions of Mississippi. So here's what comes up for Raleigh over the next okay. five days. We don't live in Raleigh. Rain on Wednesday, so we don't Wednesday, need that. All right. So the next one I want to show you is a brain pop. And... That is on severe weather. So we're going to start with severe weather. That's going to be the last section, I believe, in your book. Oh, I'm sorry, section two in your book. It's on page 201 to 205 in your book. So this will be the only brain pop that I show, but the links for the brain pop, like I said, are in the PowerPoint. Hey, you ready? The sky is totally clear. Look outside. All right, but, but you were the one who was all into the idea of getting buried in the sand. Dear Tim and Moby, what are natural disasters and how do they happen? From Maritza. Well, that's a good question. Moby's claiming that a hurricane will ruin our beach day, but... All right. Natural disasters happen for different reasons. Some are weather-related, like hurricanes. These tropical storms form over the ocean, picking up speed and strength as they move over the water. If a hurricane hits land, its high winds and heavy rain can cause a lot of damage. Thunderstorms are a lot more common than hurricanes. The thunder can't hurt you, but lightning is a powerful form of electrical energy that you want to stay away from. I think we're pretty safe from lightning in the house. Tornadoes are the most violent storms that nature sends our way. With rotating funnel-shaped clouds and winds reaching 300 miles per hour, tornadoes can do a lot of damage to large areas. Winter storms bring snow, freezing rain, sleet, and temperatures that make you want to run indoors. They can cause icy conditions on roads, fallen power lines, and extreme cold. Right, floods happen when land is covered in more water than it can absorb. Lots of things can bring about floods, including heavy rain, overflowing rivers, and even melting snow. A flood can mean a few inches of water in the basement, or an entire house washed over. It's sort of the opposite of a drought, when there's not enough water. Droughts are slower to develop, but the lack of water can devastate entire ecosystems. It is scary to think about. Sometimes these disasters can be predicted, giving people enough time to relocate. But there are also times when these things catch us off guard, or are more powerful than people expect. Earthquakes are especially unpredictable. They happen along plate boundaries in the Earth's crust. When plates shift, the Earth shakes. Well, earthquakes vary in intensity, so you can't always feel them. Depending on how strong an earthquake is, it can cause a lot of damage, or very little. When an earthquake occurs underwater, it can trigger a tsunami. These massive waves can travel as fast as 500 miles an hour. When they hit land, they can bring a lot of destruction. Some tsunamis are caused by underwater volcanoes, eruptions of hot molten rock from deep inside the Earth. Volcanoes are linked to plate activity, too. When they erupt on land, their ash plumes and lava flows can do a lot of damage. Yeah, they can start wildfires, but those are more often caused by people or lightning. Wildfires happen a lot in dry areas. They move fast and are difficult to put out, especially if it's windy. Huh. I, I get what you're saying. These, these are natural disasters, and it may seem a little like the Earth is trying to kill us, but this is just the way the planet operates. Our planet has a lot of water on it, and it's constantly in motion, and that means droughts in one area and storms in another. Likewise, the Earth is very active geologically, and pressure from moving tectonic plates has to be released somewhere. Of course, none of that makes natural disasters any less scary. But we are getting better all the time at predicting these events. 
and governments and humanitarian agencies do a lot to help out whenever disaster strikes. At home, the best thing you can do is to make a family plan so that everyone in your family knows how to reach one another and where to go in case of an emergency. And make sure you have a ready kit of basic supplies you'll need in an emergency. Okay, right now I really want to go to the beach. Well, you know, you can't always believe what the weather reports. But I, but I, I guess it's always, always good to listen. Okay. So here we are back with severe weather. Severe weather can sometimes prevent us from doing our day-to-day -day activities. Some examples of severe weather are thunderstorms, thunder and lightning, tornadoes, hurricanes, and blizzards. You should know a few examples of severe weather. Thunderstorms, thunder and lightning, tornadoes, hurricanes, and blizzards. So thunderstorms. We have all experienced thunderstorms living in New York. Maybe not as severe as some of the thunderstorms in the Midwest. So here is the brain pop link. If you want to watch that on your own, please go ahead. And here is something called Tornado 101. Now, I believe I already have this on my computer somewhere. Yeah, for you to watch. It's very interesting. What we need to know about thunderstorms, why are they severe weather? Because they bring heavy rains, flash floods, 
thunder and lightning. Well, thunder is uh, just kind of scary. It's noise, but the lightning can cause fires. All thunderstorms form in cumulonimbus clouds. So I told you before, we've already learned that cumulonimbus clouds are known as thunderheads because of this reason. So the rain can be so fast and furious that the ground can't soak up the water in enough time, and that's what causes these flash floods. The flash floods will loosen the topsoil, and trees can fall and crash into houses and on cars and on people. Strong winds can be generated from thunderstorms that can also damage properties, uproot trees, things like that. And hail. So hail from thunderstorms can dent cars, dent the houses, break windows, and in some severe cases, will kill people if it lands on them. All right. So here are some pictures that show you damage from hail. This right here is the windshield of a car the back windshield and the front windshield, and you can see how the tree was uprooted here. It's very crazy with the damage, and hail can range in size from very tiny to eight inches across. Eight inches across is almost as big, it's bigger than your hand, from the bottom of your hand to the top of your middle finger. Bigger than that, hurling to the ground at 100 miles an hour, if you got hit with something like that, it would hurt. Uh, hail, I think I have this one already queued up. So let's see, hail storm, here we go. So we're just gonna watch a couple, I'm not gonna watch all six minutes of it, but we're gonna watch Hailstones crash through windows. They shred trees and crops, pummel livestock, damage roofs, wreak havoc on cars and everything underneath its wrap. Hail can turn a scorching summer ground into a winter wonderland in minutes. Oh my god. Sometimes baseballs just fall from the sky. Other times strong winds hurl hailstones sideways like bullets. If you're caught away from shelter during a severe hailstorm, you've got a problem. If you're a storm chaser, hail is your nemesis. Oh man, no hail please. Yet you proudly wear your hail dents like victory battle scars. Hey! Brand new truck, right? Oh yeah. A hailstone forms as a tiny water droplet journeys up above the freezing level in some of the most beautiful and dramatic thunderstorms. But how does it get so big? And how big can it get? Look at that everywhere. In an environment conducive of a severe hailstorm, this rising air or updraft is often exploding into lowered freezing levels. This is the factory where hail is made. All right, we saw that yesterday, but if you want to watch the rest of the video, you can watch it. It's here. No, no worries. The next thing I want to talk about is lightning and thunder. So, here is a link to a page that has, can it open up for me? There we go. It has a video of lightning strikes. Now we know lightning is extreme form of electricity. It has a lot of energy. If it hits you, you could die. You don't always die. Um, but it travels through, it can travel through water. So when lightning is happening, you don't want to be out in the rain. Electricity travels through water, and you also don't want to be out in a field. So here are some examples, I think, of some lightning strikes. Let's see if I can get it. Seriously, this is probably stupid. I'm probably gonna kill myself. Oh man. Some of these are like right under the sound. 
Alright, if I die, tell my family that I'm Crazy, right? Definitely don't want to be hit by that. Um, so lightning comes from inside of the storm cloud. I'm just reading from your book on page 202 now. The movement of air can cause different parts of the cloud to become oppositely charged. When current flows between regions of opposite electrical charge, lightning flashes. It can occur within a cloud, between clouds, or between a cloud and the ground. So basically what happens, lightning is so hot, so intense, it actually cuts air. It cuts through the air. And when it comes back together, when that air comes back together, you hear it as thunder. So the thunder is just the sound. The lightning is the frightening part. And then last we have tornadoes. So I have, again, a brain pop about tornadoes. I have two videos that I want to show you about tornadoes that I have queued up for you. Let's see. On April 29th, 2017, multiple tornadoes would touch down east of Dallas, Texas. Two of them dead. I've got a woman. I'm taking her to the hospital. All right, be careful. A stationary boundary positioned over the town of Canton would serve as a track for tornadoes to train down one after another. Man, it's heading right for town. For the folks in Canton, the nightmare was never ending. Oh my God, those people got to get out of here. Those people got to get out of here. They're going to die. For a veteran storm chaser, the third and largest tornado of this family was the scariest tornado I've ever witnessed. Oh man, this thing is moving fast. Okay, right, I'm going to skip forward here. Tracking highly visible tornadoes over open land is more mesmerizing than scary. So this is a tornado that is a mile wide. Once it touches down on the ground. You see the spinning air. And you'll see a funnel touch the ground. scared the hell out of me. Oh, it's coming fast. I gotta go. The tornadoes go slow or fast and they can change direction on a dime. You might think they're going away from you, but they can turn okay, and come straight forward towards you. Here. And quickly. The winds are can pick up cars, buses, houses. So of course they can pick up people. See that tornado right there? That is a mile wide. Anything it's touching right now, it is destroying. If people have not got shelter, they have a problem. You can hear the rain or the hail, I'm not sure what that is, hitting his car. It's heading right for town. At this moment, a wedding venue is being overrun with 20 people crammed in an interior bathroom. After the mile-wide tornado passes, it will be the only room still standing. Everyone will survive. There were three tornadoes that happened at the same, at the same time. Or the same day. Look how big this is. Look at those clouds. See it still? You see it turn, twirling? See the column of air twirling right there? It's still on the ground. Look at that. The tornado is now destroying a Dodge dealership, tossing cars up to a half a mile. A woman was killed as her car was thrown from the interstate into a field. Another man will lose his life, as well as many farm animals. Looks like it's over a lot of trees. I mean, there's houses everywhere out here, but it missed the main part of town. We're gonna have to go check on these people. 
After the tornado has passed, hazards are scattered everywhere. Twisted metal, spears of splintered wood and nails, glass and rebar. Wires everywhere I can. Power lines down to cross lawns, roads, and wreckage can easily kill you, even if you are standing several feet away, especially in wet conditions. Your throat and nostrils often burn from broken lines pouring gas into the air. The worst thing you can do while trying to assist tornado victims is become a casualty yourself. I just saw another tornado right there. There's a tornado following it right in there. See it? Another one. All right. You guys can keep chasing if you want. If you want to watch the whole thing, it's there for you to watch. But just to see how incredibly strong nature can be. And the other one. Hmm. Writing's not that easy. That's the same one. Finish this up. Oh, the other one looks like this. I see it! I see it! It's okay. You can see it. See the funnel here? It's not a tornado until it touches the ground. So once it touches the ground, it will become a tornado. The people who are driving into this are called storm chasers or tornado chasers. They risk their lives, some people just for the thrill of it, some people for science. But look, look at this. As soon as that tornado clears, it's going to be a funny day. So you see a funnel reaching up and a funnel coming down. They need it. They have met. There they go. There's a tornado. Right there. Now you can start to see debris flying around in the wind. They look okay. And they're actually right on the edge of the tornado. I'm not sure why they're going so close. Hopefully they're this is in the main science. But again, you can watch that video as well. I don't want to waste all your time here. And then we have hurricanes. This is a brain pop on hurricanes. And this is a, a little video, the 101 video. Now this is what a hurricane looks like from several miles up. You can see the eye of the hurricane here. People call it the eye of the hurricane. It is still. You see all the weather is happening around it. The eye of the hurricane is pretty still. Um, now we're on page 204 in your book. The most powerful storm is a hurricane. It is a large, swirling, low-pressure system that forms over the warm Atlantic Ocean. For us, is the Atlantic. If we were on the other coast, it'd be the Pacific. So tornadoes happen over land. Hurricanes happen only over water. The warmer the water, the stronger the hurricane will be. So that's another problem with the global warming that we're in right now. Our waters are getting warmer, so we're having more hurricanes and stronger hurricanes. Um, let's see. So here is, I'm going to link this up for you to watch. On Cyclone, typhoon, hurricane. All of these hurricanes are unpredictable. But scientists have a thorough understanding of how hurricanes form and sustain their power. All right, so you can watch that on your own. But we've all, we're all familiar with hurricanes from... You know, we hear about them in Florida a lot. We've got the tail end of the hurricane. We usually get the rain that comes with the hurricane. But we've never actually had an eye over us. Our ocean water is too cold for the time being. Blizzards. You have lived through a blizzard. There's a blizzard of 2016 that hit New York. And really what a blizzard is, it's high winds and snow. High winds and snow, you got a blizzard. And, oh, I forgot to show you my hurricane video of Al Roker. 
I remember we were studying about Al Roker, but he was a very big man. He lost a lot of weight, and uh, people were making fun of him because he ended up falling in this hurricane, and people said maybe he oh should have weight on. It's like gone. It's way better. Good. They were saying maybe you should have kept the weight on, just teasing him. 24th, 2005. A Category 3 hurricane named Wilma shows off the incredible force of its wind. In fact, NBC's Al Roker is knocked right off his feet. Live shots for the Today Show are usually Roker's beat, but this day, he gets beaten up. It's left to the cameraman to keep Roker from blowing away. Don't you wish you had your weight back? Right about now, I do. Oh. It's Roker versus Wilma. But that was really wins to show you how strong these winds can be during a hurricane, even a tornado, how strong they can be. All right, and then lastly, is weather safety. When there is some type of severe weather, the National Weather Service will issue a weather warning and tell you what to do. So you listen to your TV, your radio, and find out what you're supposed to do. Now we have our cell phones, so there'll probably be some kind of alert. When severe weather hits, make sure you're prepared. All right? So of course you're gonna have a homework for this uh, slideshow. Go through the slideshow. I'll post the, the slideshow alongside the video so that you can look at the videos on your own. All right, ladies, have a good day.